Tolkien or uh, George Lucas, where in some sense, as they play the game, they end up creating every aspect of the game, of the creatures, of the characters, of the environments. Uh, I'm going to pop out of this really quickly and show you one of the last phases of the game here, which is, uh, there's a whole lot of the game that I'm just kind of skipping over right now, but basically what happens is you actually evolve your creature through many, many generations. You get to buy more parts, add it to it. You might become a carnivore, you might become a peaceful herbivore, social pack animal, whatever. Eventually you actually kind of go through, these are some of the other creatures that were designed by other players, as a matter of fact. Now as you're playing this game, let's say you're a creature living in this little environment competing with other creatures, the other creatures that you're competing with are actually coming from other players automatically. So as you play the game, the game is actually building a model of the player, and it's populating your world with things that it thinks are appropriate for your world, but they were made by other players. So the process of playing the game, you're making a lot of stuff, a lot of content, but it's also stuff that's being automatically downloaded to other players' games. So every time you play the game, you're encountering the creativity of other players as well. So it's a shared universe that players are building as they play the game. Now, this is much later in the game. Eventually, you kind of go through you know, tribe, civilization, all the way out into space. And so this is one of the later phases of the game where now we have high technology, we actually have this little UFO thing. Up to now we've been playing the entire game on the surface of this one planet. This is where we've evolved. This is basically our home planet here. And in some sense this is like a little toy planet that we've given the player. And so there's actually things like a very simple little food web here. Uh, there's a simple climate. We can actually kind of leave this world. We can uh, bring things with us, biological samples, and go out and start exploring other worlds here. So as I pull away here, this is our uh, home solar system. We see some comets, some other planets. Let me do a little cheat here really quick. So in some sense, I think of these things as toys. I went to a Montessori school, and I was always very impressed with Maria Montessori's kind of approach to education, which is that if you can kind of build the right toy and let somebody directly experience interacting with it, that they will discover really interesting principles on their own. And so in some sense, I kind of wanted this to feel almost like the ultimate philosophy toy, that in playing with this toy, you know, this toy universe, toy planets, toy creatures, that players would automatically kind of come to realize and trip over interesting principles of life and nature and science, things like the Copernican principle or the Anthropic principle, uh, Drake's equation. And these are things that just kind of are natural result of the situations that come up while playing the game. So here's a little planet that I've come to. This is maybe something some other players created, uh, probably populated with other creatures. And I can do things like abduct the creatures and then bring them and try to actually bootstrap whole little ecosystems. So I'll just grab some here. In some sense, I can kind of use my UFO as a butterfly net collecting things with my abduction ray. I can use these to actually populate an entire kind of food web on another planet, you know, and, uh, or maybe even kickstart a civilization. I might come across a tribal planet and try to get them to worship me. Basically all the genres of science fiction <laughs> that I enjoyed as a kid, you can kind of replay in this. We have a monolith I can drop and kind of spark intelligence and make a race and, you know, become sentient. Uh, I can play War of the Worlds. I can become, uh, basically build a federation. I can also just kind of play with the toy planet and understand kind of long-term principles. One of the things about these toys that are interesting to me is the fact that I think a lot of the things that uh, we're screwing up the planet with now are a result of the fact that we don't have long-term intuition. You know, we basically have short-term intuition over the space of a few years or maybe a human lifespan, but we have very badly calibrated instincts over millennia and centuries. And so with something like a game, we can actually fast forward all these processes. One of the things I can do here is I can actually kind of start playing with the planet uh, climate. So here I'm going to start injecting some greenhouse gases. And uh, over time, we'll actually start seeing things like extinctions and uh, ocean levels rising. I could actually melt the planet if I wanted to. You know, and in fact, one of the things I'm trying to do in the game is actually terraform planets and stabilize the biosphere. But basically the idea that I can give somebody, some kid or an adult, a toy planet, have them kind of experiment with it by kind of playing with it like a guinea pig, you know, poking and prodding it and seeing what the long-term results of it are, means that you can start, at least in some sense, calibrating long-term instincts for these things. And in some sense, you know, I want to give like every 15-year-old kind of the ability to be a god in this little limited kind of toy world and then get a sense of what kind of god, you know, would they be? Would they be a vengeful god, a nurturing god?